Hello again. So this time we're going to talk about the green belt song with using the bow, because this uh, piece has to be performed with the bow. Uh, from this point forward, we will always be using the bow. So green belt on through black belt, beyond black belt, all with the bow. Um, it's, it's how we most of the time uh, play violin or viola or cello or, or any of the orchestral stringed instruments. Um, so I like to get the students to that point as quickly as possible. Uh, it is the third of the main challenges of the instrument. The first one just being able to get it into playing position. That was white belt uh, level. And that's always going to be something we have to revisit to get all of the right um, uh, positions and things like that. Uh, the second challenge was getting the fingers on the string, which was uh, happened to be uh, orange belt and green belt uh, also was obviously going to have that as well. So this is the third. And after this, there really aren't any great big challenges. Uh, you know, there are, there's a development of technique, but it's not going to be uh, quite so difficult uh, from this point forward as far as what do I do now? And I'll continue making videos uh, for you and I'll post, keep posting them to uh, this YouTube channel. I hope it's uh, useful for you. I'll hopefully try and make some you know, better quality ones down the road, but just to, just to get you going for now, I think that's the most important thing. So in using the bow, uh, what's really important is how you hold it. We want to make sure that we are developing a good bow hold from the very, very beginning. And there's a few different ways of approaching it. The, the book has some pictures of, of you know, putting your hand out front and lying it down in there. Um, those are very, very useful. Uh, a way also I, I, I have shown the students is if you think of gra grabbing it, relaxing it, and that's, that's good for cello right there. For violin and viola, one extra step would be just sort of tilt it so that your pinky, now remember this is going to be backwards to how uh, you might be holding it um, because of you know, the camera involved here. Uh, so violin and viola is grab, relax, and then tilt it lean it in a little bit so your pinky can be up on top, right? And that's really important. Now, uh, you'll notice all my fingers are leaning over. They're not all spread out. I'm not, I'm not doing anything like this. I'm not holding it in my palm, anything like that. And everything is, is curved and relaxed. Those are really important uh, in your bow hold because if you have a lot of tension, uh, you can actually, over time, you can, uh, you know, over years and years of playing, you can get things like tendonitis and things like that. Not fun, um, but also just it's just more tiring that way, so we don't want that. Uh, the way it will look on the other side with the thumb, let me see if I can get this here. Hold on. It's always backwards. The thumb has to be curved, um, and it's touching on this little nub right there. See, there's a little cutout. In, this part of the, of the bow is called the frog, and it's spelled exactly the same way as the animal. It actually doesn't mean the same thing. It's, it's a frog is something that hold, it's a clamp. Um, so go figure. Yeah, but we call it the frog and everybody thinks of ribbit, ribbit, and that's perfectly fine. Um, so this little bump here where, the, where there's a little cut out there, that's what your, your thumb should be uh, sort of making contact with. I got to get used to things are backwards in the camera. I apologize for that. I'm not exactly a TV star. Um, so anyway, so we have that, and notice you're basically holding the stick with your fingers kind of, most of your fingers kind of uh, draping over it. And for cello, all of them kind of drape over it, right? So we're not in the fingertips either, right? That's not, that's not good. That's not going to work too well. And also, you might see some people play this way in, in the beginning, uh, where they put the thumb in the bottom. I discourage that. I started that way when I was, you know, I started when I was four years old. Um, because the bows were so small, I couldn't get my, my hand in the right spot. But I don't want you playing that way. You're, you're old enough in third grade, you can do it the, the professional way. Um, and that way you don't have to relearn it later. Right? It's very, very useful that way. Okay, so when you have it like this, um, you have to imagine as you're moving your bow back and forth that it's going to go in a straight line across a flat surface. And that surface could be on different angles depending on which string you're on. So if you were on your highest string for violin or viola, uh, for violin would be the E string, for viola would be the A string, you might be at a very steep angle. The next string over might be a little bit less than that, and then almost almost flat for the for the next string, and then 
almost pointing down for the last one. For cello, it's more a, a case of going around right, the cello. And we want to try and keep it on that one string back and forth. So it takes a lot of concentration to do that. What I recommend is just with an open string, again, it doesn't matter if you're cello, viola, or violin. It's going to be the same thing on each one. This is what makes all these instruments the same. Just take an open string and go back and forth. Let's say I'll take my D string, and I want to try and, and do two things. One is keep that angle at, as, as consistent as possible and also to keep it moving this way as straight as possible because that, that's what makes the better sound. And I'm also trying to keep it about halfway in between the bridge and the fingerboard. That's where the best sound is. If I pull it here, it has a really harsh sound. If I put it here, uh, it's gonna, you're not going to get as much sound. So we like to keep it in, in right in the middle is the best spot. So if I just go back and forth... <laughs> straight as possible and as consistent of an angle as possible, right? Then, uh, then I can get that nice sound. If I start hearing this, that's because my I'm rolling it too much. Or if I hear the higher sound, it's the same idea. So you want to try and really, you're looking at your string, really trying to balance. And there really isn't a whole lot of room there. You can't tilt it very much. We, they make the string so you don't have a big range to go between them, because when you do have to go between them fast, you don't want them far apart. So you develop a, a, a way of, of being consistent with that. And there's some things in the book that will help you, so do read that. Um, easiest way to think about it is to think about what your your arm is is doing and, and I'm going to try and do this by standing up a little bit spotlight here um, your the height of your elbow is really what t is really what determines what string you're on so if I'm on a high string like the, the E string for violin A string for viola it's kind of down here by my side if I'm on a low string it's up here somewhere in the middle it's just you know comfortably at my side for cello you know, same thing. It's more like coming out this way. So here would be my C string, G string, D string, A string. I'm kind of reaching around a little bit. <clears throat> so uh, it's all to do with trying to keep that angle the same. The, the, the less that you move your entire arm, the better your bowing will be, right? So it's really just bending at the at the elbow and your wrist will bend also in the opposite direction to keep things as straight as possible. So this part of your arm determines what string you're on. This part of your arm is what actually moves it back and forth, right? Now, I mean, don't don't keep everything rigid because we don't want to make things uh, too tight either. Okay, so this, this is how we use our bow. Uh, one of the enrichments uh, in the book talks about doing your or using your bow for Land of the Silver Birch. This is perfect because it uses those three out of four of your strings and you already know the song. Right? All the way through. So that's a really good practice before you start uh, thinking about trying to combine one hand with the other. Right? So the challenge with violin or viola or cello is always that one hand is doing something completely different. I mean, there is a relationship there, but there's something completely different. It's not like piano, where they're they're both doing this action, maybe at different times. But we have motion here that's different than motion here, um, and uh, coordinating those can be can be tricky, right? So be patient with yourself. And I'm going to make one more video so I can show you with the bow again, just to keep these videos on the on the shorter side.